Our current understanding of the universe is that it appears to be infinitely big. But does the universe actually have an edge? And if so, what lies on the other side of that edge? In a nutshell, scientists believe that the universe is limitless. Instead of having an edge, the universe is continually expanding and stretching, and the space between everything in the universe is spreading out infinitely in all directions. And so, galaxies are moving away even further from all the other galaxies. Physicists Stephen Hawking and James Hartle proposed the No Boundary Proposal, where they stated that the universe does not have a boundary. To simplify this, think of planet Earth, which doesn't have an edge. If you travel from the North Pole, the term North loses its meaning because your location is relative. The same thing happened with the Big Bang. If you travel back in time to the moment the Big Bang happened, time becomes obsolete. This is because each moment in the history of the universe is a time point with its own history and future. In other words, the No Boundary proposal treats the universe as if it doesn't have a point of origin. In order to understand all of this, we need to go back all the way to the beginning, the Big Bang. So far, most astronomers use the theory of the Big Bang to explain how the universe began. But the Big Bang wasn't similar to a bomb detonating and filling the space with debris. Instead, the Big Bang happened everywhere in the universe at the same time. This explains why scientists can observe the remnants of the Big Bang everywhere in space. Scientists believe that the Big Bang caused the explosive expansion of the universe, which was already infinite. So the Big Bang made it even more infinite. Now that we know more about the Big Bang, how did the scientists conclude that the universe does not have an edge? There are two main arguments for this conclusion. The first argument is that the universe is flat and uniform on the cosmic scale. This means that the universe does not warp around itself like a sphere. If it did, it would mean that if you traveled far enough in a straight line, you would end up back at your starting point. A great concentration of mass is needed to produce space-time curvature. If we average all the moons, planets, stars, and galaxies in the universe in order to get a large-scale expression for the mass distribution of the universe, we will find it to be constant. The second argument is that our corner of the universe is not so special or different. As a result, scientists have concluded that all parts of the universe must be flat and uniform. And for that to happen, the universe is required to be infinite and without a boundary, or edgeless. This might be difficult to grasp, but infinity as a concept of something endless and unlimited is a perfectly valid mathematical model that is used to help us study and describe the universe. Did you know that humans can only see a part of the entire universe? We call this part the observable universe. Many galaxies in the universe are simply so far away that the light they emit did not have enough time yet to reach the Earth. As the universe is continually expanding, the space holding these galaxies is expanding away from Earth at a speed faster than light. And so, the light from these galaxies will never reach us, no matter how long we wait. One day, astronomers in the distant future will have to be content with studying only our local group of galaxies. Do you like stargazing? What are your favorite stellar shapes to observe? Share your thoughts in the comment section.